everybody, and welcome to Cooking with Francois. Let me take off the mask so you might be able to hear me better. Well, today we are finishing up our super fall soups, but we're also going to be cooking something else for you so you can get ready for next week. And that is, in the pressure cooker, homemade cranberry sauce. Very, very easy to make. You take a bag, which is 12 ounces, of cranberries, and we put them into our cooker. There we go. We then take 3 fourths cup of sugar and a half a cup of water. We put our lid on our cooker, turn it to pressure. We're going to set our pressure and we're going to cook it for five minutes. So, that's going to be cooking away while we start on our creamy chicken wild rice soup that you can also use your leftover turkey for. So, I'll be back in a minute to get started on our soup recipe. All right. Almost getting it ready, getting everything ready for our soup, but our cranberry sauce is ready. So once your five minutes are up at cooking at high pressure, we are going to release, do a quick release. We're going to stir it, and then we are going to put it on the brown saute setting for just a few minutes, um, about five more minutes and our cranberry sauce will be ready. So, it's almost finished releasing, it seems. There it goes, look at there. Timed it just right. Oh, that smells so good. All right, now I'm gonna put it on brown. I'm going to stop it, put it on brown, and I'm going to put it down for five minutes, stirring occasionally. All right, when we come back, I'm going to show you our finished product. And I bet if you try this, and you can make this ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator, but I bet you won't ever buy that canned stuff again. Of course, if I was making this for myself, I would have probably experimented and put some orange zest in it because I love the taste of orange and cranberries together. All right, be back in a minute to get started on our soup recipe. time to do our soup. Now, the soup starts on the brown saute setting in our pressure cooker, to which we add five slices of chopped bacon. And we let that cook until it renders its fat. Then we'll start adding our other ingredients. You can hear that bacon sizzling. The recipe doesn't say to take the bacon out, so I'm going to leave it in. But now we're going to add a medium onion, two cups of 
diced up carrots, and two cups of chopped up celery to the pot. We're going to stir that and cook that for a few minutes and then add our next ingredients. Be back in a minute. All right, we have cooked our carrots and our onions and our celery. Now we're going to add two tablespoons of butter. Bay leaf. teaspoon of dried thyme. Sometimes we use fresh, sometimes we use dried. And let's mix that up, get that butter down in there so we can start melting. We're just going to let this cook for just a few minutes, not long, and then we'll move on to the next part of our recipe. All right, our bay leaf, our thyme, and our butter. Oh boy, already smells delicious. Next step is three large cloves of garlic, minced or pressed, I just chopped it. That goes in and we give it a good stir and we're going to cook that for a couple of minutes and then we'll be back with our next ingredients. All right, our garlic is cooked for about a minute or so. Now we're gonna put in our broth. It says use four to five cups of reduced sodium chicken broth. So I'm gonna use five because I have a lot of hungry people here at the branch. So, I sort of, this is the way my great aunt always measured when she was measuring um, her bourbon for eggnog. She just kept it going when she turned the thing over. Maybe that's why we all loved it so much. I don't know. Number five. All right, and give that a quick stir. Now, we add eight ounces of mushrooms. I'm using Cremini's or Baby Bella's because those are the ones I like the most. So I'm using those as far as my mushrooms go. We're now going to add one cup of wild rice. Now I'm using a wild rice mixture instead of just straight um, wild rice. But basically, I guess you could use whatever you want. Um, wild rice takes a little bit longer to cook than regular rice. So keep that in mind when you are um, cooking it. So the rice goes in. And a sprig of fresh rosemary. Use dried thyme, but we're using fresh rosemary. We've got, that means at the end, we've got two things we've got to fish out. We've got to fish out our bay leaf and our stem that our rosemary was on. All right, we're going to, once we've stirred that, we're going to add three-fourths of a cup of heavy cream. Little note for you um, during this upcoming holiday season, both Thanksgiving and Christmas. Remember when you're buying whipping cream, you don't want to buy the one that's going to stay fresh the longest. You want to find the one that's got the closest date 
to the date you're going to use the whipping cream because it whips better once it's a little bit older. Because remember, you whip it too much, you're going to have butter. So, here we go. I've got a fourth of a cup measure. And we haven't seen the last of our cream either. We have one and a half teaspoons of salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Recipe says you can use milk or half and half. <laughs> you know me. I'm going to use the heavy cream. I want it rich and wonderful. So, we're going to add two chicken breasts. Now, the great thing about this recipe is that when we're finished pressure cooking it, we're going to take the chicken out and shred it and put it back into the soup. But you don't have to put the chicken in now. You can wait till the end when you would normally shred this chicken and use your leftover turkey in this soup and it works just as good as cooking two boneless skinless chicken breasts in the soup. Now of course it's going to give it some flavor but we are using chicken broth in it. I'm going to mash it down in there so they're not floating there on top. We're going to put our lid on our pot. We are going to cancel the browning feature. We're now going to cook. We're going to pressure time cook and we're going to do that It's one of the longer ones we've done. Thirty-five minutes. And then we take our chicken out, we shred it, we add it back, and then we're going to take some heavy cream and a little bit of flour and make our slurry to put in that will thicken up the soup a little bit also. So, I'll see you in about 35 minutes. Well, probably longer because it does take about eight or nine minutes to get to pressure. So I guess I'll just say I'll see you directly. All right. It's been 35 minutes. Plus, you have to take 15 minutes to let it release naturally. Now we're going to release it manually the rest of the pressure. One of the reasons being that um, the pot's pretty full and they said they don't want any of the soup coming out through the venting process. As soon as it gets to where we can open it, I have taken three-fourths a cup of the heavy cream and one-fourth cup of all-purpose flour and I've made a slurry. This will help thicken our soup. Remember, we use five cups of broth. If you use four cups, it'll be a little bit thicker already. But since we were adding this to it, and I have so many hungry mouths to feed here at the branch, that I decided that I would just go ahead and do the five cups. It's getting there. Yeah. All right, here we go. Now we take out our chicken. Well, you're supposed to take out the chicken breasts and shred them. However, they're falling apart on me here. There we go. Here's one of them anyway. 
So we're supposed to shred up this chicken. It does smell very good. Oh, look what else came out. Well, I got rid of our rosemary stem. So nobody's going to die choking on that. It's a big plus. The rest of the pieces of chicken are real, real... Oh, look at there. Bay leaf. Okay, let's put our chicken back in. Let us add our slurry. Let's give it a good stir. Well, I tell you, it's pretty thick already. But I am going to put it on brown saute just for a minute. Just to give that slurry a chance to thicken up. When we come back, we're going to serve us some and try our chicken and wild rice soup. All right. Our soup is beautiful. So let's, let me stir it up here and put some in my bowl. Let me let you look at it. And while you're here, you can look at the cranberry sauce, which turned out wonderful. And sugar to taste on the cranberry sauce because to me it's fine. Some people like the sweetness of the canned stuff. I like this better because it has that tart flavor. So, but let me try this soup. Piece of chicken dangling. Out of this world. I hope you will make this and also remember you can do it with the leftover turkey or chicken or whatever you got. You can make this wonderful hearty soup. Be wonderful on a chilly morning. Maybe a chilly day, not in the morning. I don't know how to do for breakfast. But anyway, remember, let's dig in. <laughs> 